I would say the biggest thing is get involved. Find something you like. InfoSec's a big space. Find something you like in it and learn more about it. Just dive into it. A uh, year and a half ago, I didn't really know a lot about USB. And it just started digging into it and learned more and more and really liked it. So, you know, go to some cons, get out there, network a little bit, meet people, but really find something you like and just dig into it. Well, uh, the best thing, since it is such a vast field, they can easily get lost and uh, lose uh, their interest, be discouraged. So the best advice I can give is that they start with something they like, they love. Uh, for example, if they like networking, that they start looking at networking and that they try to solve problems that haven't been solved before and, and persist to that because uh, persistence is very important to, to find uh, solutions or work out uh, work once. Uh, don't give up after a couple of days if it doesn't work. Just persist. Uh, help, get help from other people. Uh, you know, there have been security researchers who have worked for years on problems just uh, to find the final uh, exploit or final bug. So choose what you love and persist to it. That's my advice. Uh, read voraciously, like everything you can you can possibly find. Uh, there are lots of good communities out there. Uh, Reddit R NetSec is a, is a particularly good one. Um, there are lots of online classes. Uh, Dan Guido posts all of his videos from his class at NYU Poly, and those are taught by the best people in the industry. So it's almost like having a, a personal tutor walk you through things. There there's lots of opportunities to out there to out there um, if you have the drive to, to pursue them, um, just start reading. I think the number one uh, piece of career advice that I can give, um, now I have found a little bit of success in machine to machine. Machine to machine is a broad spectrum industry, right? As I previously mentioned, there are millions of applications out there in every single engineering application um, thinkable today, right? So if somebody's specifically interested in you know, medicine or telecommunications or uh, ATM machines or what have you, there's an M2M device there that needs to be secured that probably hasn't been reviewed from a security point of view. And that gives everybody an opportunity to jump into this billion dollar industry where they have a chance to really change a device and enhance a device from a security perspective that could affect millions of customers all over the world. And that's a really significant thing that we can get involved with that really makes it a better idea uh, or a better way for us as researchers to get involved in the user community, right? If I was talking to somebody coming into the information security industry, if you like, um, I would say that uh, don't discount the importance of communications. Um, have a look at psychology as something as a sidebar subject that you might read into because understanding why people do what they do and how to affect that behavior through persuasion uh, is a huge part of information security. I mean, it's what, it's what the social engineers are doing to get past our defenses. So we should be tooling up, if you like, in the same department. So psychology and behavioral anal analysis is really important and good communications. So security is a really interesting area and I, the reason why I stuck with it and why most people in the field stick with it is because it is so intellectually challenging. I think people who want to get into the industry should focus on a broad base, first of all. There's many niches you can go into, but I think if you cover something like the CISSP course, which gives you a broad background, that's definitely something that you can build on. And there's so much intellectually that's stimulating in our field that you can just pick any one. So you've got mobile that's very hot right now, botnets that's very hot. But at the end of the day, people want to be able to use their computers simply and safely. And it's people such as the speakers at Black Hat and the attendees which are making that possible. I think it's funny that you say, yeah, what advice would you give somebody breaking into security? Uh, as a matter of fact, that, that, tendly, that you know, tends to be the way that people do. They break into security, right? Uh, you fall into a role like this. But the reality is, if you're going to try to uh, get into this kind of role, get into more of a defensive uh, behavioral analysis, you just have to be able to understand people. I think that's something that is sort of a lost art. We understand technology because it's easy, right? It it's, tends to be binary. It either does this or this. We can program it to do certain things. When it fails, we can understand why it failed. Uh, modeling human behavior and trying to figure out, we've always said that humans are going to be our weakest link in information security. 
that is going to be sort of the, the holy grail, the magical thing that we're all trying to attain. How do we get to that understanding the human part and model what their behavior is going to be and then try to figure out how to train them? It's like Pavlov's dog. How do you, you know, make sure that every time somebody gets an email that looks sketchy, their first reaction isn't to double click on that uh, attachment. Their first reaction is to go delete, right? That's what we need to figure out how to, how to train people to do. And if you're trying to break break into this field, uh, I think it's a good thing to do to have a social background, uh, you know, sociology, psychology. Uh, security isn't just about knowing packets and TCP stacks and buffers and all that kind of digital stuff. Knowing the human side of it, I think, is a big asset these days. And being able to model not just a threat, but the defenses against it, because that's overwhelming too, right? All that data that's being gathered.